Welcome to part 17, spawning and respawning. So currently the players spawn at the zero world coordinates, and we can change that. We can have spawn points and have them spawn at those points. So make an empty game object. Just reset the position here, and I'll call it spawn position one. I'll add a special component, network start position and I'll just change the position in X to 3. I'll duplicate this and call it spawn position 2 and make the X minus 3. Okay, now in the network manager I'll change the player spawn method to round robin and because of the network start position now the network manager will automatically recognize these start positions and spawn the players at one of the two of them. So I'll go ahead and build and run that to see it in action. Okay, so if I join, there we go, that's one position. Well, I probably shouldn't have moved to better show that. And if I spawn the other, there you go, you can see that it spawned in a different position. Now though, we have to update the health script because when the player is uh, destroyed, they will be spawned back in the zero position. So now we'll change the health script so that they will spawn in either one of those two spawn points. So let's edit the health script. Okay, so we'll add a new variable. Private network start position. It's an array. Spawn points. I'll add a start method as well, so void start, this is a unity method of course. And here I'll capture a reference to each of the spawn points uh, in the game. And this is only done on the local player, so if is local player, spawn points is equal to find objects of type. And that type is network start position. Now I'll change the RPC code so it will no longer be transform.position is equal to vector3.0. Instead, we will identify, we'll pick one of the two spawn points at random and spawn the player at that position. First of all, I'll make a variable called vector3 spawn point, that's the name of it. And I'll just give it an initial value, just to get it initialized, vector3.0. If spawn points is not equal to null, and spawn points dot length is greater than zero, so it has entries and the well, the length is greater than zero and it exists, then in that case, spawn point is equal to spawn points in the index random dot range zero to the length of spawn points. Spawn points dot length. So because it's an int, it'll be, uh, it'll exclude the uh, length value, so the number, it'll be one less than that. Uh, okay, then so spawn points random dot range zero to spawn points dot length, so that's the index a dot position or rather transform dot position. So that's the vector three value. This is where we want the player to spawn. So that's it. So we just look at uh, the spawn points captured in the variable in the array and then select one at random and then just use that. Okay. So transform dot position is equal to spawn point. Right, so save that and that should be it. So build and run. Okay, so let me move the player away. Let me move the client. Alright, so it looks like I'll just have to do some shooting to clear stuff up. So 
So let's get rid of the enemy. Good. Now let's get rid of the player. Bang. Good. So they went to one of the spawn points. Let me shoot at the uh, player. They came back to that position. There we go, and that's the other one. So there's a 50% chance that it'll be either one of those two spawn points. Which is very good. Nice. So there you go. That's the uh, system working. So now they can spawn at a spawn point, and when they respawn, they will also go back to those spawn points. Alright, so that's it for this uh, a simple multiplayer tutorial set. Uh, the next video is just a summary video.